Welcome to Why Do You Need Math in an ERP System? Hey, I'm Eric, and um, ever since the birth of Business Central, Dynamics Nav, Navigation Navigator, um, we have always had a very, very limited set of math functionality available, I guess. Again, this is the, the so here's the dirty secret that the only stuff that we have in AL in, in the language is the stuff Microsoft or the mission before them have needed in order to make their application. And if they had no use for cosinus or sinus or tangent or stuff like that, then the functionality was not there. It was not until very recently that we actually got a random function because why would you need random in a, in an ERP system? Um, but what do you actually do if you want to do math? If you need to calculate something uh, outside the uh, the very basic stuff, um, you know we can we can we can, we can we can handle four plus five, right? We can we can also do division and we can do all the normal stuff. We can even do you know, power to in the power of five work fine. We got that. We got we got apps, uh, and and now that's kind of it. So what do we do if, if we need math? Well, uh, thankfully uh, somebody needed math at some at some point. So what they did was that they added a math code unit to the system application app. So if we go and create something called math here, and then we find a code unit called math. And let's check out what we can do with math. So now we can do math dot. And we got apps, a cos, a sin, a sin, a sin two, uh, produce the full product so we can, we can multiply two integers with each other and get a big integer because at actually at this point if you created a big integer and and then you have you no know, i integer here and then we say that i equal uh, something like that and then we did b equal i times i this wouldn't work um, because Microsoft never never needed this to work. Uh, but this works now if we go math and then we say big mole i and i. That actually works. We got um, we got ceiling and floor to do. Uh, rounding differently we got cosinus we got some constant we got e i think that's also pi logarithm max min and 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 the power function which is kind of the same as the one we have um so so we got pretty much let's see if i can anything interesting i missed here i don't think yes so uh so, so I triple E remind us, um, which is kind of a, uh, so so when when we are working with decimals, we're working with absolute decimals. We're not working really with floats, but then sometimes we do stuff where floats actually are considered. So it might be useful in some cases. I don't know. Uh, we got square root, we got sinus. So if we want to, um, to draw circles of something, calculate something with circles, that all uh, geometry, we got the options here. Um, and this is part of system application. So let's, if we go in and hit F12 on, on this one, we can see that this is actually just a wrapper. And this is the wrapper of, you can see this is .NET math. Um, 
So, so we have a uh, somewhere. Let's see if we can find that. Uh, we have a the math class in C Sharp or in .NET, uh, the CLR uh, uh, type. Uh, so, so this is simply just a wrapper. Apart from there's only apparently this many decimals in in Pi here. Which is more decimals than NASA is using, by the way. Um, but other than that, these are just a straight wrapper from the for the functionality that exists in uh, in .NET. Um, so let's say that there's something in the .NET wrapper or in the .NET uh, data type that has not been created as a wrapper here. What can you do? Well, you can. You can do one thing, which is pretty cool, because this is actually open source. So this is part of system application. So if we go and uh, and and find, see if I do al app, then I think I have somewhere. So if we go here, this is the this is basically the source code for the uh, the system application app. So. Somewhere in module in system, we can go down and we can find math. And we can see here there's permission, the source code, there's just this single code unit. Um, but this means that you can you can make a a a a, a, a clone of this. Uh, you you can um, you can fork. That's still correct. Sorry, uh, you can fork this uh, this code unit. You can add your own uh, functionality to it, uh, which is pretty simple. And then you can create a pull request to Microsoft, and then it will take a look at it and see: Have you added uh, the the appropriate uh, documentations? And is it is it does it look right? Does it look like uh, the stuff they made? If it makes sense, then they will. Uh, accept your pull request, and now your code is basically part of Business Central. Uh, and we did this on the channel a while ago, where we added stuff to the Base64 uh, uh, data, so Base64 code unit uh, to handle character encoding, which was pretty cool and 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 not that difficult. Um, so it's a great way of. Uh, of getting something in there if you really need it and instead of going because the only other way if you need to do something then either you have to truly do the math from the ground up or whatever you have here or crazy stuff for calling into javascript and stuff like that you, you don't want to do that because that's tremendously slow and and unstable um so that's how you can get a bit more math out of a business central if you have that need. Uh, it's it's always interesting with these platforms where the only thing we get is what somebody else is need, somebody else need. But now we actually have the chance to say this is what I need here, Microsoft. Please put it into this, in into your system, and they will do it if your pull request uh, makes sense and is you know correct. Um, so. I don't think that this video is the one on uh, the base 64 stuff, but maybe it is, maybe it's not. It's selected especially for you, and I'm pretty sure it's a good one. So check it out. See you there. Take care. Bye.